Okay, before I uh, begin to read Colossians, uh, the first thing I want to say is, uh, for what purpose um, are we born again Christian? For what purpose do we go to church? For what purpose do we read our Bibles? For what purpose do we uh, witness to other people? What is the, the, the ground purpose of everything that we do? The ground purpose for everything that we do. It is the reason why Jesus Christ came. Which is the ground purpose of everything. Jesus Christ came to save souls. Okay? The purpose for our change of behavior, the purpose for our reading the Bible is because Jesus Christ came to save our souls. And to save our souls from what? From a place called Hades or a place called hell. The ultimate thing is really Christ came to increase the kingdom of God by winning souls and inviting souls into the kingdom of God so that they can experience life abundantly. Because on earth you will never experience life abundantly. You may experience a blessed life, but even the most blessed, you know, if, if even if Bill Gates gets sick, there ain't nobody going to help him. I mean, he can pay for medicines, but as rich as you are in this world, it's still flawed. So nobody knows what abundant life is until you actually get to the presence of God and the kingdom of God. Because it doesn't matter how rich you are, you can die. Okay? Whatever situation you are in, in the physical realm, can change overnight. And believe me, I've seen it happen. Very rich people become very poor. Okay? Very poor people become very rich. So things change in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And so there's no abundant life here, but Christ came to save us from the place that is the worst existence of, 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 of life that is, that is uh, possible for man. And the worst existence for life that is possible for man is a separation from God in a place where he created for angels to spend eternity. So the ultimate goal is that we are fighting for life. Okay? We are fighting for life. Now, in your fight for life, you are going to have some challenges. And one of the greatest challenges you're going to have in this fight for life is deception through false knowledge because Satan knows what it takes to get into the kingdom. Remember, he says, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God, right? But then they do the will of my Father, okay? So Satan, let me tell you something about Satan. Satan has read the book, okay? He knows the rules, okay? Sometimes he tries to play outside of the rules, but he knows playing outside of the rules won't work. But he knows the book. And he knows that you can confess Christ, but everybody that says, Lord, Lord, will not enter the kingdom of God. So Christ set forth some very specific things in the scripture. He said, look, you cannot, God cannot be mocked. Meaning that you cannot make a fool of God. Meaning that there is a standard of living that God wants you to be in when you accept Christ. Because he's trying to bring you into the kingdom of God. Okay? Now, the worst thing I can tell you. Let me tell you. I play pro football. The worst thing I can tell you is when you're out there, you know, don't try to go too hard. Just take it easy. Because... All of us guys here are really nice guys. We're just here to make the team. Okay, now if I tell you that, you as a rookie, you're going to come in and you got to go, well, you know, we're just all here trying to make the team and we're friends. But once you get on that field, you're going to find out the truth of the matter is even the guy that rooms with you will knock your head off if you got the ball. You understand? So the truth of the matter is, look, if you're going to play, if you're going to try out for this team, look, when you out there, protect yourself at all costs. Go as hard as you can at all times. And whoever gets in your way, hit them as hard as you can because they're not playing out there. 
That would be the truth. The truth of Christianity is live a life narrow on a narrow road. Okay? Stay as close to Christ as possible. If you should sin because you're not going to be perfect, repent, get back on the road, and keep walking in Christ. Do not take this war that you are in lightly, okay? That would be the truth. Now, if you take that truth and you walk with it, then you can make it into the kingdom of God. But if you take a lighter truth and say, a little sin is okay, God, you know, he kind of winks at some things anyway that aren't really that important to him. So just live your life as you please. And because God's going to always forgive you and once you save, you always say, I could feed you that line, but I'm not feeding you what it takes to get to the kingdom of God. Okay? So this is why um, I'm saying this before we get to Colossians because God is setting some rules forth in the book of Colossians chapter 3. And he's saying, this is what I desire from you because these things are going to help you to make it into the kingdom. So you're in the book of Colossians? Yeah. That was my old one. Praise God. It says um, in Colossians uh, chapter 1, since you have been raised with Christ, set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Hit the brake. Stop right there. Since you have been raised with Christ, you accepted Jesus Christ, you were baptized, you were raised, meaning that you have been raised, resurrected, a new creature in Christ Jesus. Now Christ says this, set your heart, right, on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand. Okay? Now, he's saying, now, we're in this world and some things, you're going to have to be earthly minded about some things. But the main focus of your day-to-day -day life has to be on Christ and His kingdom. Because God is saying, this is what will keep you focused. If you start focusing too much on earthly things, you're going to lose focus that you don't even really live here. You understand? You're, in a, you, you're just a pilgrim passing through. Once you accept Christ, you know um, your citizenship is not even here. God does not consider you an earthly or an American. You understand? You are now a citizen of the kingdom of God, representing the kingdom of God. Now you're just passing through because you're going to a greater place. So set your things on the place where you're going, not on the place where you are. Because if, if, you, if you understand where you're going, you won't do stupid things to gain stuff while you're here, knowing that you can't stay here anyway. You understand? So now it says, set your heart on things above, and it says, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things, because your mind is the part where you have to control, okay? Correct it, cast down your imagination, and say, no mind, we're not going to think about that. Our heart and our mind is on Christ. Set your mind on things above, uh, not on earthly things, for you died. And your life is now hidden in Christ. I mean, it's hidden with Christ in God. Meaning that you no longer exist as your own person. You now belong to God. The old person has died. When Christ, verse 4, when Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. You will not know the real you until Christ appears in glory. You understand? You don't know, you don't know what you are and who you are and what you're capable of. You don't know life until Christ appears in glory. Then you will see the glory because you will be as he is, you will be. Then you will say, okay, now I have life. Now I understand what life is all about. But here you cannot really grasp what life is all about because you're dead. Okay? You're dead in Christ. Your life is hidden in Christ. Everything will be revealed to you in the day that Christ appears in glory. Okay? It says, put to death, therefore. Now he's going to try to give you some rules because you've accepted Christ, you belong to Christ, and your mind is supposed to be on Christ. 